This episode of Key West History contains content that we find completely reprehensible. We present it to you today because it is indeed a part of Key West history. It's a blemish on our history and a part of our history that we desperately wish we could rewrite. We bring it to you as a way to remember the mistakes of our past so that we never forget the lessons learned. Above all, we can now be proud that today, Key West and its one human family motto is what brings us all together. Before World War II, the Ku Klux Klan was an important social and political force in Key West, and Manuel Cabeza ran afoul of that force. A native conch and World War I veteran who was said to fear no one, Cabeza was deeply in love with a black woman, a well-known madam with whom she lived. In those days, a white man might have a black mistress, but he's supposed to keep it strictly a backstreet affair. Manuel lived quite openly with his lover, and so, a week before Christmas in 1921, the clan visited him, bearing tar and feathers. Manuel fought with them and, during the struggle, managed to rip the mask off several of the faces so that he would later be able to identify them. Tar and feathering was not only excruciatingly painful, it often resulted in the victim's death. Manuel Cabeza's back looked like one of those red cube steaks that has been all diced up to make it tender. He was forcefully abducted from his Key West home by a mob of KKK members. The mask mob then drove Cabeza to a remote area of the island where he was horsewhipped, tarred, feathered, and left for dead. Cabeza's offense was living with a woman of color. His relationship with a half-American, half-Cuban woman known as Rosita Negra was a serious crime in the 1920s Florida. Norbert Diaz, Cabeza's friend and one of thousands of Cuban cigar makers on the island, recalled the notoriously abrasive Cabeza and his attempt to fight the KKK members. Before being beaten unconscious, Diaz noted that Cabeza tore off the hoods of several members of the mask mob. He vowed in repeated screams that he would repay them all. By Christmas Eve, Cabeza has recovered enough that he could now exact his plan of revenge. While riding in a taxi, he spotted one of his attackers, William Decker, the manager of the Samuel Davis Cigar Factory, who was driving home with his family's Christmas dinner in his trunk. Cabeza's taxi followed Decker and pulled alongside his Ford just as it passed the Cuban club on Duval Street. Cabeza leaned over, pulled out his revolver, and fired several shots into Decker's car, with the fatal shot piercing Decker's jaw just as he stumbled out of his vehicle. Cabeza ran four blocks and took refuge in the home of Rafael Solano. A crowd composed of onlookers, KKK members, and local police soon gathered around the residence. After an hours-long standoff, Cabeza eventually surrendered to the police. Two sheriff's officers arrived, and Cabeza agreed to accompany them to the county jail. The sheriff called in Marines from the naval base to protect Cabeza from the Klan, but by midnight dismissed them, believing that all was quiet on the Key West front. Within an hour, five automobiles loaded with mass Klan members pulled up at the jail and with pistols drawn ordered the diminutive sheriff to let them in. The Klansmen proceeded to the second floor of the jail and beat Cabeza senseless with blackjacks. Then they dragged him down to the street, tied him to the rear bumper of the lead car, and paraded him through the streets of Key West. Then they took him over to Flagler Avenue, where they hanged him from a tree and riddled his body with bullets. This was the gruesome sight that greeted hundreds of Key Westers on Christmas morning of 1921. And to this day, no one has ever been arrested for that crime. And it was today, February 18th, 1924, that the local order of the Ku Klux Klan put on a demonstration with a parade and a naturalization ceremony at Bayview Park. And that's what happened today in Key West history. 
Today in Key West History is brought to you by 43 Keys Media. If you want to learn more about the historical events that made Key West what it is today, you can visit us at 43keys.com. You can find this program as well as others as an Alexa Flash Briefing. You can also find us on YouTube and anywhere you listen to podcasts. So wherever you're listening, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and never miss an episode. And then we'll see you over at 43keys.com.